Aristotle. He was an eminent personality and known as the pioneer or the person who has actually initiated the work to understand the biological classification. He has made multiple attempts to understand the scientific basis of classification of organism. His classification strategy was based upon the morphological characters of plants and animals. So he basically classified plants into trees, shrubs, herbs and animal into two groups. Those which had red blood cells and those who didn't had red blood cells. As you can see here, animals which had red blood cells such as mammal, lizard, bird and fish and those who didn't had red blood cells. Now what happened to those who don't have red blood cells? They had hard bodies or maybe they had soft bodies. Hard bodies like hard shelled were insects and soft bodies were again shellfish and jellyfish. Shellfish as we know has a cell covering or what we know as oysters. On the other hand jellyfish is very delicate or soft. But the common characteristic in all of them is that they don't have red blood cells in them. After Aristotle, the next person who did magnificent work to understand the classification was Linnaeus. He proposed two kingdom classification in year 1758. So as per his classification, he classified organism into either plant or animal. It was very simple classification and it continued till a long period of time. So students, you must be very curious to know that whether this classification which was proposed in year 1758 is the one which we are following till date. No. Two kingdom classification was succumbed to major drawbacks as a result of which it was later discarded. The drawbacks were that the prokaryotes which included bacteria, cyanobacteria and eukaryotes consisting of fungi, mosses, ferns, gymnosperms and angiosperms were included in under kingdom plantae. It is basically based on the presence of or absence of cell wall. So the ones who have cell wall are the plant and the animal cell doesn't have a cell wall. But prokaryotes and eukaryotes are widely differed in other features. To have a better understanding, we should first understand what are prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are very simple beings who doesn't have any particular cell organelle or the nuclear content of them is not enclosed by a nuclear envelope. They include bacteria and cyanobacteria. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, are highly advanced, multicellular like fungi, mosses, ferns and other plants which have an intact cell wall and other well-defined organelles and also the nucleic acid content in them is enclosed by a nuclear envelope. In the two kingdom classification, basically prokaryotes, eukaryotes and the plant which we see, herb, shrubs, they were all included in the kingdom plantae. According to them, the presence or absence of cell wall is the main criteria for this kind of classification. So since the plant cell has a rigid cell wall, so all them, all of them were included in the plantae kingdom. But this is not the right way for identification because there were certain other traits which is present in these prokaryotes like bacteria, cyanobacteria and other eukaryotes like fungi, mosses which need specific classification and that proved to be a major drawback in this two kingdom classification. Again, it included unicellular and multicellular organism in one group. So we need to have a division that multicellular are kept in one group and unicellular are kept in another group so that there is no chaos. Furthermore, it did not differentiate between the heterotrophic fungi and also the autotrophic green plants. Fungi have chitinous cell wall while the green plants have cellulosic cell wall. So as I mentioned, the cell, was a, cell wall presence is a criteria to be in a plantae kingdom. But cell wall content that is the cell wall composition is a major factor. So sometimes the cell wall is made up of chitinous material that is in case of fungi. However, in plant cells it is made up of cellulose. So this also created lot of variation and confusion. 
So basically, this system did not distinguish between eukaryotes and prokaryotes, unicellular and multicellular organism, and photosynthetic and non-photosynthetic organisms. That's why this kind of classification system was discarded. Next came the five kingdom classification. Five kingdom classification was proposed by Whittaker in 1969. So herein he went into little deeper classification and he included Monera, Protesta, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Herein as in the previous classification which was just based upon the presence of cell wall or the morphological characteristics these classification system which was proposed by Whittaker that is the five kingdom classification was bit more advanced and more specific. It considered the cell structure, thallus organization, thallus is present in plants and fungi, mode of nutrition, how they are synthesizing their food that means whether they are autotrophic, autotrophic means those who can generate their own food using sunlight water like the plants or they are heterotrophic that is they are dependent upon other organism for their food habits for example parasites the parasites are the ones who are who use the other animals and derive nutrition from them and also they considered other characteristics such as reproduction and phylogenetic relationship the word phylogenetic relationship means the study of ancestral origin a bacteria for instance has evolved to a certain extent but we should know who were the ancestral uh, bacteria from which that is derived through a process of gradual evolution and has reached to a final stage which is right now we are seeing. So these are phylogenetic relationship, reproduction, the food habits, the mode of reproduction, the nutrition, thallus organization, cell structure, all these criteria were considered while going for this five kingdom classification. So as per this five kingdom classification, the organisms were divided into five ki kingdoms. First one is kingdom Monera, then comes the kingdom Protesta, followed by kingdom Fungi, then kingdom Plantae and last but not the least is kingdom Animalia, which we had heard in our previous discussion as well. Now let's have a gross look on the various characteristics features which are present in each of these groups. So on one side you can see the name of this particular group Morera, Protesta, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia and other side is mentioned are the various characteristics or attributes because of which they are said to be so. So when we come to cell type, the Monera are the ones who are prokaryotic and prokaryotic as I already told you, they are very simple beings without a nuclear envelope, without any cell organelle. You can imagine them as a one cabin room. The nuclear content is in the cytosol itself and there is no organelle. They are very simplified organism present in our system. The cell wall composition of Monera includes polysaccharides plus amino acids. It is composed of a mixture of polysaccharides, polysaccharides and amino acids. As I already discussed that nuclear membrane in prokaryotes or moneras is absent. Body organization, they are cellular. Cellular means single celled beings. They are single celled beings. And what is the mode of nutrition? Mode of nutrition in them is autotrophic. Autotrophic means photosynthetic or they can be chemosynthetic. Photosynthetic means they use the sunlight energy to derive food from them and chemosynthetic means they use chemical energy to derive food. Heterotrophic, they can be saprophytes. Saprophytes are those who derive energy or food from the dead or debris and parasites are those who have the tendency to make others prey and then derive nutrition from them. Similarly, if we go to protesta, protesta are eukaryotic, they are not prokaryotic. So eukaryotic over here means that they are developed, they are multicellular, they have intact nuclear envelope, they have other cell organelles which are needed for advanced functioning like they have mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell, they have chloroplast which is needed 
to for the photosynthesis to happen. Then they have other organelles, they have a DNA repair system, they are advanced than the prokaryotes. Cell wall, cell wall is present in some and maybe present, not present in others. So it is not a fixed criteria, the presence of cell wall. Nuclear membrane, they have an intact nuclear membrane. Body organization, they are cellular. Again, mode of nutrition can be autotrophic as well as heterotrophic. Next, coming to fungi. Fungi are basically eukaryotic. They have a cell wall, but which is not made up of cellulose. That is made up of chitin. Similarly, nuclear membrane is present. Body organization can be multicellular or loosely held with tissue. Then they can be heterotrophic as well as you know, which consists of saprophytic as well as parasitic in nature. Plantae, on the other hand, are eukaryotic. This they have a well-defined cell wall which is made up of cellulose. Plantae, which includes all the plants which we see, herbs, shrubs. Then nuclear membrane is present. They have a well-defined tissues and organ system. Mode of nutrition is autotrophic. They derive energy from sunlight. And animalia. Again, they are eukaryotic as well, but they don't have cell walls. So animal cells, they don't have a cell wall. They have a cell membrane, which is semi-permeable in nature. Nuclear membrane in this case is present. They have an intact DNA content, which is enveloped in a nuclear membrane. Body organization consists of tissue, organ, organ system. So it is a very well-defined and developed system. Again, the mode of nutrition here is heterotrophic that can be hologeic as well as saprophytic. So these are all the characteristics, the general characteristics which are present in, in these five groups which was used in our five kingdom classification. Dear students, let's have a look at kingdom Monera. Kingdom Monera are basically the bacteria. Bacteria are the most abundant microorganism. Hundreds of bacteria are present in just a handful of soil. The peculiarity of the bacteria is that they can survive in extreme habitats such as hot springs, desert, snow and deep ocean. They are also parasitic in nature, that is they thrive on other beings. Do you know a friendly bacteria? Yes, Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli is a human friendly bacteria. You will be amazed to know that this bacteria resides in our intestine or gut lining and in turn help us to remain healthy. So there is a homework for you. Kindly make a list of bacteria which are very helpful for us the human beings. Now let's understand the various shapes and structure of bacteria. Bacteria can be in cocci shaped that is spherical. Bacteria can be bacillus shaped that is rod shaped. Bacteria can even be a comma shaped and also they can be spiral in structure. It will be good for our understanding that we at least know names of few bacteria in each category. I will help you with one of them. Cocci or spherical shaped bacteria. One of these spherical shaped bacteria is Staphylococcus and also Streptococcus. Streptococcus pneumoniae causes pneumonia. It's a deadly disease. You will be amazed and will love to read about many bacteria as such. Therefore, please make a list of bacteria and the various implications they have on us. Let's now try to understand the structure of a bacteria. As you can see in the figure, the bacteria over here is a rod shaped one. It is surrounded by a capsule. Capsule is a protective layer formed on the bacteria which helps the bacteria to survive in harsh condition. Although the structure of bacteria are very very simple, but they show a complex behavior and a very huge metabolic diversity. Some bacteria, as we already discussed, are autotrophic, that is, they synthesize fruit from inorganic substrate. 
Majority of them are though heterotrophs, that is, they do not synthesize the food but are dependent upon other organism on or other dead organic matter for food. So when it comes to dead organic matter, they are known as saprophytes. Or when they are dependent on other organism to derive their food, they are known as parasitic. As you can see in this structure, the first one covering of the bacteria is known as capsule. The capsule is followed by cell wall. Cell wall is the rigid covering which again protects the bacteria from harsh condition. Thereafter, it has a plasma membrane envelope. Cytoplasm of bacteria is very, very simple. Bacteria cytoplasm has a nuclear DNA without any organelles. It too has ribosomes and plasmid. Plasmid are the extra chromosomal DNA. It is not the DNA which is used for replication. The plasmid utility is that it provides survival advantage to the bacteria, such as it confers various important traits of antibiotic resistance. They also have some pili which helps for anchorage. So this was the basic overview about bacteria, their morphology, their structure. Moving ahead, let's have a look at the reproduction in bacteria. They are very simple beings, so is the reproduction. Reproduction in bacteria occurs primarily by fission. Fission here is a binary fission. Binary fission means division into two. It is a very simple process wherein the bacteria cells elongate and then divide into two. Also, they form spores. Now, what are these spores? Spores are a dormant state of bacteria which helps it to survive in harsh climatic condition. Once the climatic condition is subsided, then they germinate and form again a bacteria. There is another sort of sexual reproduction which is adopted by DNA transfer from one bacterium to another bacteria. This is an advanced way for them to undergo reproduction. So, we can total summarize our entire discussion about this bacteria that they are very simple beings. They are prokaryotic in nature. They are cellular. They can be autotrophic. They can be heterotrophic. Their reproduction is simple by process such as fission, and spore formation predominantly and the most important criteria is that they are highly abundant in nature they are found everywhere some are very friendly and very good for us however there are parasitic bacteria as well 